What's going on everybody? Today we are finally going to be, let's see this thing goes in better like this, putting on the turbo kit for Carlos' Integra. Got all the flanges decked up yesterday and then uh, it's doing like uh, some buttoning up on uh, this wiring over here. So if you can see this over here, these are the wires for the little fuse box used to be over here, so extended them about 10 inches, just so we can get them inside the car further and get them mounted where we want to. And uh, yeah, that should be all situated, and we are freaking making some progress on this thing, and it's kind of nice to actually make some progress on this because I normally don't get like a lot of time to like sit here and just work on one thing. Like yesterday, I was trying to work on this and trying to get this done yesterday, but I ended up running around and I didn't get back here until like, like, uh, I got back here like six o'clock, so it's been super busy, like giving quotes and doing some mobile stuff, and it's just been, it's been awesome. I'm really excited, honestly. Like, it's kind of feels nice that like my business stuff is finally paying off, because there are some parts of it, like not even too long ago, where I wasn't really sure if it was gonna work or not. <laughs> so, I guess it always gonna be a factor, I guess, but yeah. Go ahead and throw the turbo on real quick. This is always the fun part to do because you gotta like hold one bolt in the flange. Oh man, I held this wrong. <clears throat> or in the gasket. So it's always fun trying to get this in there with the gasket to cooperate and stuff. I normally just try to put one bolt through it and get it hand tight and then try to line up the gasket with the other one, which is sometimes pain in the ass there we go did go ahead and get the turbo setup on I got the oil feed on there still need to like move some stuff out of the way stuff's kind of just all over the place but got the oil feed on there I just ended up using the same one that it had because it has this nice like braided one with like these crimped fittings I did get the oil return done let me go over here and show you guys man look at how nice that is nice and straight Away from the manifold. Like I said, don't mind this harness and stuff here. We gonna move that. Alrighty, so we did go ahead and finish up the fuel line. So we got our, it's gravity fed from the back of the sump here. Flows into the first filter, which is a 100 micron filter, which is the pre-pump filter. It's supposed to help uh, filter out anything that would go through the pump and possibly damage it. And then we have our dash 10 feed line that runs up over into here. And then this is the bracket I was telling you about that goes to our secondary filter, which is the post pump filter, which is a 15 or 20 micron. And then it's nut inserted with the, I think they're like conduit things or something from Ace Hardware. I'll show you them. These little things, they're uh, nut inserted up in there, so they're actually like in there good. They're not just self tapered. So I need to go get another one. They only had three of them there, so to put it here in the middle of this to keep this from dangling. But yeah. Got that all mounted, and then the return line is really simple because it's just straight. But it just runs along this stuff over here where the old fuel lines went, and it goes back into the tank. And then the feed comes up to here. It's ran down and along underneath there, and it like goes underneath the cross member. Goes through the rail, goes to the regulator. Because this is on an AEM Infinity, we have the fuel pressure uh, sensor in it as well. And instead of putting like a little plug back there, I just modified the fitting and welded it and we're able to get it to work. So it goes to a regulator and then back down to the tank. The goal is to make around 800 on the turbo. I think that's gonna be right about on the limits of this turbo just because, just based off of like some Evos and stuff up here at altitude, they normally make right around like 800. It's like sometimes 850 corrected. Uh, so yeah, if this thing makes that much power, it is gonna be so much fun. So that's the plan. I think today, I gotta work on my truck for a little bit. I gotta fix the death wobble, the old Dodge death wobble in my truck. So I don't know how much time I'm gonna get to work on it, but we're gonna be doing, uh, mounting the battery up front of the bumper and we got this cool solid state relay that Sean told me about. That actually makes relocating your battery or like running a cutoff switch to the back very easily. So that's the plans for us this video. Trying to get some work done today. Trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with Carl's uh, Battery, I don't really like mounting them in the trunk. They just have to run a big power wire over there. It's another big wire in the car. And they always have a lot of uh, voltage drop across that big long wire. And then you got to put it in a box back there. And it's just annoying. So either way, we're going to have to run a cutoff switch to it, which we'll show you here what we got in a second. But I like mounting the battery up front because it's just nicer, I think. 
Um, and this thing is nice because it is a K series. It has uh, just the same side end tank on it, so there's nothing over here for intercooler piping. So it's really simple to mount the battery over here. Just got to make a little tray and uh, some brackets for it, which we're going to do here in just a bit. But I'm kind of planning it out, so I'm thinking the battery's going to go there. And then this thing right here is what I was talking about. This is a big solid state relay that is turned on by just uh, what I'm going to do is run a small little switch in the back that just interrupts the ground signal for this. So it makes it really simple and uh, you don't have to run one big power wire, you just have to run one small wire like this to interrupt the ground on the switch. So it's really nice, it's like a 200 amp solid state relay basically. It's expensive but it is way worth it. So I'm thinking the in, so the in will go right to the, uh, direct to the battery. So I'm thinking of mounting it just like this. So that way you just run the positive right from there, right over to there and then run the other cable that uh, there's one that needs to go to the fuse box and then one that needs to go uh, I think to the starter I don't know we'll figure it out but I'm thinking I'm gonna mount this here and uh, yeah all should be good well this little battery box thing was cooling off oh uh, yeah I wonder if it's still hot just gotta weld it on the ends here just to hold it in place you have to add a bunch of brackets to it anyways but it holds the battery in there nice I was over here delooming the uh, main power that uh, goes to the alternator and then also the charge wire that comes from the alternator that's supposed to go to the fuse box, but you definitely don't need to have it go to the fuse box. It's probably better to, what I normally do is I upgrade the wire anyways, cause it's such a thin wire uh, to begin with. It uh, is happier with a fatter one. So I'm gonna upgrade it anyways, but check this out. This is the charge wire from the alternator that goes to the positive on the battery. Look at this, they just extended this stuff and like it's all corroded and nasty. And we were having a whole bunch of charging issues with this for a while. We kept replacing batteries, replaced the alternator even though, like, because it got tested and it said it was good and we thought it was bad, it couldn't figure it out. And then finally, I ran a new wire from the top post to the battery and it fixed all of our issues and it makes sense now why. So it's kind of ridiculous, like the main power to the starter is like that too, like, like look at this, you just, come on man. It's like four or five foot of wire. I mean, it's probably a little bit longer than that, but you couldn't just delume it and rewire the whole thing. They just put a whole new wire in there. Why extend it like this? Like, just such a waste of time. Ugh. Yeah, fixing that. Gonna take it off and just run one new wire for the main starter power because it'd be easy because it's gonna be running straight from like in here somewhere down and around to the positive on the uh, switch panel thing, or I guess on the positive on the battery. And then same with the charge wire, will go straight to the battery and it'll be super simple and easy just to take it off. We're gonna be taking the radiator out anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that out just so I can get to the top post on the alternator because I'm gonna take that wire all the way off and delume it. So that way we have all separated stuff and new wires. Radiators back in, got those uh, Dash 16 bungs all welded in there, as you can see. Did pull off the uh, upper side of the uh, whatever you might call it thing. Welded a bung on it. Did not weld very great because it is uh, some nasty cast, but got that all nice. It looks way better than the old stuff. I don't even remember if I showed you guys what it looked like, but it did not look good. So got that all buttoned up. I am uh, working right now on the dump tube. So over there, go ahead, tack it up, weld it, and then we will go ahead and put the dump tube on, the titanium exhaust on as well. I got the O2 uh, sensor. It's got two of them, so I had to run the wires up here. I got that all figured out, so we can go ahead and put this on. Oh my goodness. Joke, be careful. Gosh. Someone's excited, but in typical Hayden fashion, it's gonna be a big jump in between here of uh, stuff that we've done to the car and stuff that we uh, haven't filmed. So, yes, the fuel stuff is all done. It's already got some fuel in it right now. It tested leaks yesterday, and it did have some leaks. 
The main leak was the pump, so there's like two O-rings in that pump. Hey! Hey! I'm trying to film! Loose! Just chill. Loose! Gosh! So there's some leaks in the fuel system. Uh, had to take the pump apart and replace a couple O-rings. They've been sitting for a while, it's an old pump, so... Makes sense, I guess. It always happens to us, but yeah. It's all ready to go. Put some fluid in it, put some oil, some trans fluid, and put some diff fluid in the back. And uh, our good friend Morgan, the PFC guys, uh, he's gonna come over tomorrow and he's gonna just double check, make sure the tune's all good when we go to start it up tomorrow. So, pretty exciting stuff. I'll show you guys here a little bit. The engine bay all complete. Hopefully you can hear me with these damn dogs running around. God, Jupiter. <laughs> all right. Let me see what these damn dogs want. Y'all never play, but when I'm trying to film, y'all start playing. What are you doing? What are you doing? Don't don't get in that. That's nasty. It's trans fluid. Look at these dogs. These are goofs. Anyways, like I said, it did make a lot of progress up here. I basically got everything all buttoned up. We were waiting on a vacuum block to show up today uh, to finish up the vacuum for the blow-up valve right here, and then the uh, fuel pressure regulator. So other than that, it's all basically plumbed and everything is on there. As you guys can see, got the intercooler piping all done. And uh, I don't know, it came out really good. This is nice, it cleaned up this quite a bit, I feel like. So, looks a lot better. Just gotta finish that one, like I said. Got the exhaust on it, and it's looking really good. Got the dump tube on it down there. Got a whole cluster of wires everywhere, but this harness kind of sucks. So yesterday we did crank it over with the injectors unplugged just so it wasn't spraying any fuel so it wouldn't start. And uh, yeah, it's all cranked up. It's always a nice feeling when you like rewire almost everything. Well, not, not everything, but a lot of things on the car. And like uh, first time you power everything up, it all works flawlessly. So check this out as well. This is the battery mounted up here. And it's not painted, but this is that solid state relay that we were talking about that Sean. This is actually, I really like this. Sean shared some secrets with me, which I'm going to share with y'all. This is a nice like 200 amp solid state relay. So instead of running a mechanical switch in the back for a cutoff switch, it's super simple. So this two wire right here, one's a constant 12 and then one's a ground. So I'm just using the switch in the back to interrupt the ground signal or ground out the solid state relay. So when it's on, the solid state relay will be grounded out. So it's super simple. This is the in, this is constant 12 on this side and this is the switch 12 on this side. Uh, it's not all cleaned up yet, but this is like main power to the fuse box to the alternator, the charge wire, and then to the starter. So I need to add a fuse into here, into this guy, but for now to start it up, we'll be okay. Uh, it's just nice to fuse some stuff. So yeah, real simple. This right here is the switch I'm gonna be installing on the back. It's a really simple on off push button switch. But the nice thing about this is when it is on, I'm gonna wire with a constant 12 volt so we know when it's on or off. Because of the infinity and how it's wired, like it always wants to kill the battery. So I'm gonna make sure he always shuts this off. But when it's on, it'll have this right here will be red. So it's got a red LED ring right here so you can tell when it's on or off. So it'll be nice, uh, be just nice to have now instead. So I'm gonna install this back here. I'm gonna install this back here on this little metal piece. It's really sunny over here, so you're probably not gonna be able to see. I think I'm gonna install it like right here where there's extra room for this to sit back in there. I got the uh, ground from the solid state relay. It's gonna run a constant 12 up to here. And then uh, wire the switch up, drill some holes. Should be ready to rock after that. That's all I got to do today is uh, just do that, put some diff fluid in it, and then I got a bunch of running around and invoicing I got to do. So, uh, yeah, the uh, first start tomorrow, it's going to be exciting. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't film a whole lot of it for you guys, but I just want to get it done. I just want to hear it and uh, get it out of my life so I can start on mine. So I got some exciting news too. Dang, y'all want to see something super cool? That's the switch right there. It's kind of not noticeable, but I wanted to put it right here in the middle. Uh, there's just no room back there for the switch to go. So, but check it out. I got the headlights on and stuff. The pump will kick on for a split second. Um, I actually need to have Morgan see if he can uh, adjust the prime, how long it takes. It needs to prime a little bit longer. But check it, nice and easy. Dang. <laughs> Colleen. That makes me so happy, dude. I hate those big mechanical switches back here. Dang, dude. It's so awesome. Makes me super excited. Just gotta go ahead and put some uh, diff fluid in the back and then uh, see if this vacuum block will show up and then hopefully the next clips, more will be here and we'll be possibly tuning some stuff. Or not tuning, I'm an idiot. Possibly, he's just coming, so the only thing that's changed in the setup really is the, that's gonna affect the tune is the fuel pump. 
and possibly the lines. Uh, I don't really think it's gonna mess with it too much, but it could, so just to be safe, I'm gonna have, I want Morgan here so he can go over it if it's super lean or super rich, we don't have any issues. And that way he can just uh, glance over the card too before bringing it to the dyno. If there's anything that he wants me to address that he doesn't like, that I did, uh, we can do that then. So that is uh, the goal with having him come down here and check it out before bringing it to the dyno. So super excited, uh, hope y'all are too. 2021 with some loud noises. <laughs> Go give her a whirl. All right. It's really not that loud. It's loud, but not that bad. It sounds good. Pow, pow, pretty yeah, good. Crazy, <laughs> I think we are. Dude, that's you just, every, yeah, <laughs> you just blew off like all the grinding dust that was over yeah, there. That's what all that was. Yeah. What's up? Hey. What's up? So we got to run really quick. We got to go get some parts for the old RX-7 over here. Yep. But so what do you think? You excited? Yeah, I'm very excited. I'm only upset about one thing. What? You don't got a duck? I don't have a duck. I'm upset about two things. I don't have a duck anywhere. And what else are you upset about? I don't have about? sun visors, bro. What the hell, bro? I know. I need to wear my Louis now. Dude, or what? yeah, you always got your shades on, anyways, yeah. dude. <laughs> Race car, you got you got different priorities now. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so as you guys can see, no leaks. It was all good to go. Almost like someone knows what they're doing. Yeah. But uh, it hasn't got hot enough to discolor the titanium yet, which is kind of cool. I'm sure it will. Uh, and also, too, so we learned something new. Uh, don't put 202 bongs next to each other like this because this one doesn't get a ring at all I should have known I guess but uh, it's all good because that one is just an extra one for his gauge So I guess now we know don't really need it anyways because the ECU uh, reads off the other O2 But yeah, don't do that <laughs> And the new gauges actually read off of the ECU so I'm just gonna get a new yeah. gauge for that Yeah, and we're gonna get like an oil pressure sensor and some other stuff for this thing But hopefully here soon we'll be ready to do some street rips and then we'll go to the dyno Yep, the punch list got, you know, you had it all crossed off now we have a little Dude. bit more things added on. Yeah, my list is huge, and then we still got some other stuff we got to do. So, yeah. either way, though, it's exciting. First day of 2021, hey, and we're making start. some noises. It's a good start for sure. Yeah, I got I got a present for Hayden uh, once he gets that rear axle in. I don't know I've been what it is. For but... like three months now to give it to him, but okay, it's gonna. Well, you, guys, you guys are gonna <laughs> love this. I'll tell you that right now. Well, let's go pick it up, and then also I don't know I missed it in the video, but he uh, also dusted my shop off for me uh, with his uh, launch control. So. Feet. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Sounds good, bro. <laughs> well, thank you all for watching. Peace out. <laughs>